I love the Kirby series. Like, he's not one of my top favorite franchises or anything like that, but who doesn't love breezing through just a fun, relaxing Kirby game every once in a while? And with Kirby being pretty well known for his fun, supporting cast of buddies, I figured why not take a look at Kirby's spin-off games and see just how many times each and every character appears playable in each applicable spin-off game. You probably know the format by now. We're taking a look specifically at spin-offs with a multiplayer edge to them. Spin-off games, or sub-games contained within mainline titles, with expansive rosters of characters for you to choose from. You know, at least more than, like, two. So that means no games with single-player or cooperative focus, and no games with designated player one or two characters, sadly. As for other rules, remakes and re-releases will not be counted more than once, unless they have massive roster additions or switch-ups, of course, which none of these games have, so don't even worry about it. And also, for these sub-games within main games things, the games need to be more than just, like, the base roster of the base game playable. You know, something with some variety. And even with all these rules in place, we still have a grand total of 28 characters across only 7 games. Huh. That, uh... That isn't a lot, huh? It's not even because of the rules I have in place, like you'd think I'd have to disqualify a bunch of games. No, there's just weirdly not very many spin-off games in here that give you any sort of choice of who to play as. Though, now that we understand the scope of this list, I might as well bring up the exception I decided to make for this video. You see, for two certain games, being Kirby's Avalanche and the sub-games from Kirby Superstar, they actually do contain some pretty expansive rosters, but for whatever reason you don't get to choose who you play as? The first player is always stuck playing as Kirby, and the second player only gets randomly cycled between characters, and usually I wouldn't count these types of games on my list. I feel it's important to actually be able to choose your character. But seeing as this list is as terribly short as it is, I think we can just slip it in. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, be sure to do the usual, like, maybe even subscribe if you're feeling crazy, and maybe go check out my Patreon, get access to videos a day early, and get access to exclusive updates for as little as $1 a month. But hey, enough shilling, let's get on with the video. As always, we're starting with the one-timers over at Kirby's Avalanche or Kirby's Ghost Trap if you live in Europe. Sorry, I just love the cute little voice lines in that game. And you know what? I'll let the game introduce these guys for me. From the top, we have Ronto Burt, Broom Hatta, Bugsy, Heavy Mole, Kaboo, Lololo, and La La La, Paint Roller, Poppy Brother Senior, Mr. Shine, and Mr. Bright, Wispy Woods. And... Squishy. Quickly followed by Kirby Superstar, namely its two sub-games, Samurai Kirby and Megaton Punch. We have Wheelie and Iron Mam. Then onto the Famicom version of Kirby Star Stacker, mainly because that version lets you pick who you play as. Where we have the Holy Son, Poppy Brothers Jr., Lovely, and Grill, the wholly original main antagonist made for Kirby Star Stacker. From Kirby 64's sub-games, we have Adeline, and finally, from Kirby Fighters 2, we have Magalore and Gooey. That was, uh, yeah, that was the bulk of the characters, huh? 21 of them to be exact, which just leaves us with only 8 characters left. Might as well get right to it then. At two appearances, we have Knuckle Joe, being one of the random options in Megaton Punch and playable in Kirby Star Stacker, along with three other superstar randoms, Waddle Doo, Chef Kawasaki, and Bandana Waddle Dee. Really surprised to learn he dated this far back. And at four appearances, we just have a regular, plain old Waddle Dee. Wow, the Goomba of the series actually got more playable appearances than most. That's pretty nice. With the six-timers, we have that masked swordsman, Meta Knight. And now, here we are, already at the end. 
At seven total appearances, we have yet another tie. Two in a row, what a turnaround. We have King DDD, yet another villain I'd consider the heart and soul of their franchise, or at least a big part of it. Can't have a Kirby game without DDD. Ignore all those games that don't have DDD. And of course, who could be the final character other than the titular character himself? Good old Kirby. Except, not really? Okay, so copy abilities. So for some of these spin-off games, the fighting ones to be exact, instead of plucking existing characters from the Kirby series, they have instead opted to feature mostly, if not entirely, various different powered-up versions of Kirby, with no regular Kirby to be found. So I guess, if you want to look at it that way, that means King DDD makes more playable appearances in Kirby spin-off titles than the titular character himself. Though, I'm not the only one that feels that's a little bit lame, right? Just playing as a different powered-up versions of Kirby rather than getting to actually play as the rest of the cast? I mean, I get that most of Kirby's friends are also like, his enemies, but I don't know. Even Crash Bandicoot had the common courtesy to invite old Nettie over for a kart racing match after flipping his bricks for the umpteenth time. Though I guess from a development standpoint, that makes sense. I mean, why make a bunch of separate character models and animations when you can just as easily reuse the same one and just slap a new hat on it? Though it does seem a little antithetical for a series all about friendship just to have none of Kirby's actual friends be invited. But thoughts and complaints aside, if these copy abilities are treated somewhat as characters, well, how many times do they appear? Let's just quickly run down their playable appearances in the games that feature them, namely the Kirby Fighters series and Kirby Battle Royale. Starting with the one-timers from Kirby Battle Royale, we have Doctor, Ice, Mirror, Sleep, Spear, and Tornado. And from Kirby Fighters 2, we have Staff, Artist, Yo-Yo, Water, and the only copy ability made wholly original for these games, Wrestler, because who doesn't love a good grappler? For our only two-timer, we have Bell, who features in Kirby Fighters Deluxe and Fighters 2. For our three three-timers, we have Beam, Archer, and Beetle. And showing up for all four games, we have Sword, Cutter, Parasol, Hammer, Bomb, Whip, Fighter, and Ninja. So, that's it then. We're done, right? All the characters, all the copy abilities, what else is there? For one last category, we have colors. Different colored Kirbys in the Kirby world are kinda considered their own characters, I guess. Whether they be shattered reflections of Kirby split by an interdimensional sword, evil clones created by DDD, or just sorta there for no real reason. And often, instead of inviting any of his actual friends for most of Kirby's multiplayer outings, Kirby would literally just rather hang out with himself, with the developers treating these palette swaps almost as unlockable characters in most games, with even Yellow, the most prominent color swap, even getting an official name, Kibi. So, if the games want to treat these guys as official big names, then why the hell shouldn't we, right? So let's quickly run down all the color possibilities in these multiplayer-centric spin-offs. The only two disclaimers I have to make are that 1. A lot of the sub-games that do use colors don't let you choose which color you get to play as. It's always, player 2 is yellow, and player 3 is red, and so on and so forth. And I don't know, as I've said before, I feel like choice is important in these, and I don't feel comfortable counting them. And besides, if you are curious, the usual lineup is just yellow, red, and green. Maybe blue instead of red sometimes? And two, the games with the biggest color options, being Dream Buffet, tries to get cute with the color names. Like instead of green, it's Tea Green, and instead of brown, it's Burger Brown, and so on and so forth. So I will be simplifying those names just for consistency's sake. Though there are two colors that reuse the same color, so for those I'll be using the fancy silly name anyway. 
and we'll be doing it in reverse order, just for fun. Going from the top, all the way to the bottom. Showing up for all seven applicable games, we have yellow, blue, green, and of course, pink. Only showing up four times in these same exact games, we have red and white. Only making appearances in two games, we have brown, shadow, gray, purple, indigo, and orange. And finally, we have the miscellaneous one-timers from Kirby's Dream Buffet, with Waddle D Orange, Sky, Strawberry, DDD Blue, Navy, Peacock, Cream, Aqua, Mint, Ketchup, Sunset, Lilac, Peach, Grape, Cobalt, Rosy, Umber, Chestnut, Frost, Scarlet, Lightning, Midnight, Kiwi, Pumpkin, Pudding, Cherry, Citrus, and Retro Tone. And yeah, that's it. That's the Kirby video. Sorry it kinda turned into me dogging on the series a bit, but man, with such a cool cast of enemies and characters, it really does suck not being able to play as most of them in silly spin-off stuff. Though I suppose that's what the main games are for, right? Anyway, big thanks to my patrons, even that lousy Dean. And be sure to tune in next time. And let me know what you thought of this video. Do you prefer the more straightforward approach like the other ones? Or do you prefer series that go in more crazy directions like this one did? I've got a lot more interesting cases like this one here, so I'll see you guys next time. Catch you later.